like um in today's episode i am going to continue with um kind of the dark the shadowy details the darker details of um my new painting and i am going to also continue on this theme of kind of like childhood and um family life with i think that i've that's been on my mind recently that's kind of been bothering me um so let, let, let's let's talk let's talk about it um I don't watch a lot of TV. I always thought, think of it as kind of a, a friendly activity, like not an activity that you would do by yourself. So as someone who's lived on her own for very many years now, um, yeah, it just never ended up being something that I would do. And I just didn't have TVs <laughs> at home alone. So kind of maybe watch TV when I'm around my family, but not by myself. So um, yeah, I, I, I haven't watched a lot of movies and I haven't watched a lot of TV shows, but I've seen quite a few. And I've recently this this is tying into what 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 my what my point is going to be but i was thinking of the way that families are kind of represented on tv and the way that families and the impression that we have of families in general in our lives especially as children so um i guess like when you are younger the only examples of family that you have are the home that you came from um and also then maybe if you are allowed to go to your friends' houses. I was not allowed to go to my friends' houses when I was younger, but if you were allowed to go to your friends' houses, maybe you would look into kind of the the family life of your of your friends and their internal homes, or maybe your cousins and their internal homes. Um, and then everything else would kind of be plugged in with um kind of TV. So it's it's media, it's your own family home, a few other houses if you have the chance to see them and maybe some neighbours that you might have heard or overheard shouting if they've been particularly loud around you where you're living. So those are the examples of family that you have. So as a child, I kind of, I guess that's where you have your formative experience of what family life looks like, of what um, adult life looks like, of what stable adults are or what adults are like. That's very heavily kind of formed in childhood. And Therefore, I think media plays an important role in this because what we see on TV is the only other example many of us have of um, of what family life might look like. And well, you know, the things that generally make it to TV or that are written in TV, I'm not saying that they're untrue, but they want to have like the sexier things. So the more dramatic things, the more dysfunctional um, things, like we don't want boring television, we want exciting television. So the sort of family life dynamics that are highlighted or shown in movies tend to be I guess the more toxic ones in a way um and especially as a child or as a young adult they kind of form a huge proportion of what you consider to be average and real and therefore might highly skew your view of what is normal and what is acceptable um and so I've been thinking of this a lot recently because I kind of I think I got very frustrated um, realizing that, I mean, I'm 26 years old now and there are still times where I'll have conversations with people or I'll have conversations with my friends and I will hear them say things about their family dynamics, which I find utterly shocking and very often in like positive ways. And I'm like, wait, what? You got told that or you were treated that way? That's insane. That's mind blowing. So either in very, very good ways or sometimes very bad ways, I will hear things and I will go, what? I was never given that or I was never told that or I was never supported that way or I was never um, kind of told off for that or things like this. And I think it still takes so, I, I uncover almost at least every month, I uncover something shocking about the way that I was raised um, that I always thought would be completely average and completely normal for everyone else, but it turns out it's not. And realizing this, I started going, wait, (laughs) wait, what do I consider average to be? And what do I consider normal to be? And how is this shaping my worldview? What are the kind of toxic elements that I've gathered from what I consider to be normal? What are my core beliefs, therefore, of what average behavior or average treatment or average love or average respect is that I've internalized from my childhood that I'm just taking into the world now that are potentially not that great? And I started getting a bit angry in a way with kind of the educational system and the way that schools treat us. Because I thought, if you are a child, you are obviously very isolated. And that's a good thing. Like, I, children should not be lightly left with, you know, external caregivers. They should stay close to their family. But as children, you know, you only stayed potentially 
spend at home. So you only saw your parents and school. And I think therefore school has a huge responsibility to show what healthy family dynamics should look like. Like they have a bunch of children coming from God knows where into a shared environment. I think it would be very healthy for schools to show these are things that your parents, you know, can be telling you that are good. And this is why they're telling them maybe like expanding on the things that, you know, families don't have time to explain to us why they need to do. Um, but that might be damaging to children, but equally highlighting things that are just not acceptable. Um, I wish that as a child, I kind of knew a lot of what average was and a lot of what normal was that I'm only uncovering as an adult in therapy or as an adult with conversations with other people. And it really frustrates me every time that I'm like, how am I just finding this out right now? Wait, you all got this or you all didn't get this? And I just find that so frustratingly shocking. So I think that's just kind of um, a, a, a kind of frustration that I have with the schooling system that I wish I could change if I don't know why I would be involved in like schools or why anyone would trust me to make decisions. But kind of the argument that I would put forward if I ever could is can we just, you know, can we save children from thinking that toxic dynamics are normal? Can we please do that? Um, can we, since we have them all here, can we treat them to appreciate themselves more? Can we teach them to have more self-love and self-worth? Can we show them what unconditional love looks like? Can we show these children what normal looks like? Because a lot of them will have absolutely no clue. And I think it's it's just such a such a great thing to do that. <laughs> and it would be um, yes, such such an amazing thing to, to provide to children. But like if, if this is not done, and it wasn't done for me, of course, um, and probably not done for most people, because as far as I know, there's no schooling system that does this. But I feel like as adults now, it's kind of our responsibility to unlearn the things that we have normalized. And I'm really taking this seriously. Like I'm, I'm actively trying to do this again and again. I'm trying to unlearn what I think is average. And that's either with discussions with other people, that's through reading a lot of books. I read a lot of like parenting books and adult family books now. Um, I read a lot of like um, therapy books and mental health books and things like this to uncover what the hell is normal and what the hell is average. Not even normal because that's such a bad word. And average equally is not the best thing, but what is healthy? What does healthy look like? And, you know, what does healthy treatment look like? What does unconditional love actually look like? Um, Because... I realized that my view on these things is very, very kind of off off base. It's, it's, it's not good. Um, and I think I've made it kind of my responsibility to unlearn these things. And I think it's been a very difficult process, um, but also a, a highly, highly enlightening process that I would kind of really yeah, really recommend to people. I think questioning, um, questioning your baseline, because we all have beliefs of what is true and what is normal and what is acceptable and a lot of these especially as they come from our childhood are just like imposed on us without our without our choice we, we, we don't have the facilities to question things we don't have the logical basis to question things when we are younger and so they become I think so entrenched and so essential to our being and so unquestionable in ways that are not always that healthy so I think now that we now that we are older, we have the opportunity to um, to go out and 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 really think of like, wait, is this is this the best thing? Is this is this a normal thing? Um, and even like asking your friends, like, wait, did, did your parents do this? Um, or were you told this? Or um, just I sometimes like now, and I'm going to do this this weekend again. I'm just going to write a few core beliefs um, that I have based on like things that have been told to me and things that I've internalized as a child, um, and potentially question whether those are true and whether those are worth holding on to. And another thing that is kind of tied to this is a phrase that I read somewhere um, that basically said, when someone says that you can't have everything, what they're really saying is that they have unmet needs. And not having everything, because is is a very... <laughs> It's a very interesting way to view, <laughs> very interesting way to view things, and it was definitely something that was um, kind of mentioned to me a lot when I was younger, which was, well, you know, that this is really good because, um, you know, people have it so much worse, and you can't have it all, and um, you know, you got to negotiate in some ways, you got to sacrifice some things, and you know, these are the best things to sacrifice, um, like you have it the best kind of thing. And I, I, when I read this phrase, because it went so against kind of this this unquestioned belief that I had inside me that. Um, you know, you can't have it all. You really can't have it all. Um, I thought, well, is that is that possibly true? 
Um, and I, I guess it is because if anyone says that you can't have everything, what they mean is that they have in mind things that they don't have. They have needs that they recognize, but they haven't had met or needs that they recognize, but they haven't had verbalized or they have never dared to verbalize themselves or never dared to admit out loud to anyone else. I wonder why is that the case? Because I guess reading this, I thought, well, you, you can have everything, right? Like you, you really can. And not in the way of like, not in the cheesy way of like, oh, I want to be queen of the world and you know, I want to own three islands. And I guess, I mean, that could be possible. I'm sure people have done that. But in the way of core needs, if we go deep, if we go a level down, if we go um, true needs, as in what I mean by this is not the thought of, I want, um, you know, I, I want a, a Chanel bag. That is not a need. Um, if we go a level deeper, the, the actual need for the Chanel bag might be a need for beauty in your life, or it might be a need for status. It might be a need to be perceived a certain way. Um, and then if we go then a level deeper, we're like, well, why do we want to be perceived that way? And if we really explore that, we can get to a core essential need that is valid or is not valid and can be questioned and can be worked upon. So you can have everything because I do think that if if we if there's if it shouldn't be okay for us to want and desire something and leave that unaddressed. It shouldn't be okay for us to want and desire something and to be unable to verbalize that or not be able to kind of have that met. And most of our needs they they come from a good place. Um, I think or oh that might be a very strong statement. Maybe let's not say that. I think most of our needs have a deeper place that they come from and they have something essential that isn't being met. That might just be love definitely has been love for me in the past that may just be um connection that may just be acceptance that may just be peace um that is manifesting itself as you know you need to have a month away from your children um that i mean i don't have children, so i can't say that's not a need but maybe that's a need for something else that you can that you can't meet so i think i these are things that i've wanted to these are things that i've wanted to change um, and things that I feel very strongly about, which is just one question, everything, um, question where you came from, question what you think is normal, question what you think is average, question what you think is acceptable. And you might find very quickly that things that you consider to be utterly basic and normal and the same for everyone to be utterly unacceptable. And I'll tell you right now, I don't know if this is because I'm very, very naive, but there are things even at my age that I've only in the last few weeks and month realized are completely unacceptable, um, that I've thought are completely like normal and everyone is going has been going through for their whole life. So this is something that I would really kind of strongly encourage is this um this view and thought of question what is average. And that might look like parenting books, that might look like deep conversations with your friends, that might just look like a background awareness, that might look like an exploration into how you were raised and what your childhood looked like and what your relationships were with people around you, what relationships with people are right now. And another thing, if, if you know, if you had kind of a not so perfect or not so ideal um, kind of life so far I guess that's such a weird thing to say um but if you had if you have this belief that you can't have it all maybe I don't know maybe like me you might if you're if you're like me if you're listening to this podcast you might be slightly like me so if you're like me and you're listening to this podcast maybe we can have it all but we just it it might look different um it might look different than what you think and I would question I think that we should and can have our needs met all of them but it would take exploration into what those needs actually are. Um, so they might not look like material things. They might not look like specific time or specific people. I don't think we ever have a need for a person. Like, um, like oh, I have a need for my ex-boyfriend to have me back. Mm, probably not. Um, they might not look like that, but they might look like a need for acceptance, a need for peace, a need for love, a need for self-acceptance, a need for challenge, a need for... Um, those deeper needs I think can definitely be met and I think the exploration of like trying to understand and identify what they are and why we want them and if they're valid and if they will actually improve our lives and if there's ways that we can accomplish them while improving the lives of people that surround us would be a very worthy pursuit rather than kind of this suppression of our inner selves the suppression of our inner needs and this kind of acceptance of well you know you can't have it all got to compromise somewhere um which i don't necessarily agree with so i think yeah i think it is definitely possible to create a life that you actually want to live in <laughs> and 
um, I think it's also our duty to uncover the ways that we've been kind of fucked up, I guess. <laughs> and how do we um, recuperate for that? And how do we change things for that? And how do we build better needs, um, a better environment and a happier life for ourselves? So yeah, um, I am going to leave this episode here. Um, I think it's quite a short one, I guess. But yeah, I hope this rampiness kind of makes sense and I wonder if I've been talking way too fast which I feel like right now but um yeah when when someone says that you can't have everything I mean (laughs) you probably you probably could and you probably should and I would love to kind of um potentially talk about this a bit more um about the perspective of needs and especially uncovering and being able to express them and um, why that might be challenging because it's definitely something that I'm really looking into right now but I'm also equally really struggling with right now so yeah thank you so much for spending this time with me um, if you made it so far and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day be kind to yourself and others and don't believe everything you think thanks bye